What is up, YouTube? Mr. Lama C here, and this is the big one. 2.4 patch notes have arrived. They are massive. There is so much stuff to go over. I don't even want to waste our time on some big intro. I just want to dive into everything that is going to be happening. Oh, let me let me do this a little bit. And that yeah. Perfect. That's it. That's it. I just want to I just want to get started. Let's just read. This has just happened. Heroes of Sanctuary, Happy New Year. At the end of last year, we gave you a glimpse of the exciting new changes coming to D2 Resurrected. We're pleased to announce the upcoming gameplay additions to the PTR, PC only, which will be implemented starting Tuesday, January 25th. PST. No time, but it is PST. Uh, character progression on the current PTR will be wiped on Tuesday when we push the Tatch 2.4 balance build on the test round. But, I mean, that's fine. Everything was just kind of my characters. Anyways, this will be our community's first opportunity to experience these changes and share their feedback from their playthroughs. From the very beginning, we've acknowledged that our collaboration with our community helps us craft a better game for all. We hope you participate in the PTR and continue to share your feedback. With your help, we can continue the legacy of making Diablo 2 Resurrected the ARPG we all cherish. If you missed that developer update stream, you may, you may watch it below. Our design director, Robert Gallerani, and senior game producer, Matthew Cedarquist, joined community content creator, Mr. Lama SC. Hey! To highlight our philosophies and improvements being made to our seven unique classes. All right, well, let's just watch okay. this for the next hour and a half. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, we got it. We know it. You guys have seen it. If not, go and uh, go watch that. Also, don't forget to click the YouTube button and like and subscribe. PTR focus and details. We're ecstatic to make balance changes that will improve the viability of class. Each class will retain the class fantasy of our favorite heroes. It has been more than 11 years since we've made changes like this to the game. So when we started making balance adjustments, we wanted to focus on expanding more skill build variety and adding more viable possibilities with each playing class. With playing each class. The game is built around completing the acts on each difficulty, and we want our players to be empowered to play their heroes in the ways they preferred. A key opportunity we saw was improving the effectiveness, effectiveness of lesser used skills. As we progress in this PTR, please be aware there may be periodic maintenances, outages, hotfixes, or minor patches. All the changes implemented in this PTR are not in stone. We want to gauge reception and feedback on these changes before we make them final for live. We encourage our PTR participants to explore and play the following new content. One, new class balance changes. To ensure that the most significant cha class changes receive an ample amount of attention, we'd love feedback on changes affecting our seven unique classes. Two, new rune words. We encourage you to experience the new rune words that can be created and inserted into correlating socketed gear. Please share your feedback on these new items. Three, new Herodric cube recipes. New Herodric cube recipes have been implemented to complement set items. We encourage you to craft these and share your feedback. Especially in tandem with new improvements being made to set items that are generally under, underused by players. Four, and much more mercenary changes, set item bonus changes, new level area changes, item tooltip changes, and other changes to gameplay have been implemented for testing in this PTR. Wow. Your impressions and insights on how these changes affect your experience would be greatly appreciated. Please leave your feedback in the PTR Feedback Forum. Additionally, you can always leave comments under Mr. Lama SC's videos like this one or any of the ones from the PTR. They will read all of that, and we do love him, and he is our favorite creator. If you discover any bugs, please report them in the PTR Bug Report Forum. So without further ado, let's dive into these new changes. Wow, that's very sweet that they said that. That's very kind of them. Patch notes. Below you'll find the patch notes for the upcam upcoming update for Diablo 2 Resurrected Patch 2.4 PTR. Ranked ladder play will not be included in the PTR. As the primary focus of this test will be trialing the new balance changes. They said that, okay? New rune words, new heretic cube recipes, set item bonus changes, and other gameplay improvements. Number one, class changes. 
Oh my god, this is I'm getting sweaty already. Impale. This skill is now an uninterruptible attack. Wow. Attack rating modification has been removed. This skill will always hit the target. And this skill now slows the target by a tar by a percentage for a duration. Wow, Impale making a comeback. Uh, I mean, that's huge. Giving an, uninterrupt an uninterruptible attack to the Jamazon is actually pretty solid. Having that slow is really nice. I mean, new Ubers, yeah, right? Like, Smite 2, always get the hit. Get the slow on top. That seems super nice. Um... Oh, also, developer comments. We're re-evaluating -evalu casting delays by indivi individualizing each of their cooldowns. This means that using a skill with a casting delay will no longer add the cooldown to all their skills that have casting delays. This will allow players to use more of a variety of skills and promote more gameplay. So now you can use Frozen Orb and then Meteor at the same time without that cast delay. Fire Druid, Volcano, Fissure. Uh, I mean, you know, Firestorm, like... That's actually pretty big. That's really solid. I like that. Anyways, back to this. Okay, this is nice. Spears on overall, still probably weak. I mean, you're still just like competing with charge strike and competing with two hands with jabs and all of that stuff. But I do like that Impale at least now has is uninterruptible. I think this could be a really fun... Um, fun skill to mess around with now and at least play because again not everything has to become the best balanced usable skill i think the big thing to improve and to think about when we're going through all of this is that a lot of this stuff if it can even become somewhat viable somewhat more useful in some cases it can just be something that's fun now maybe i can do an impales on through the whole game and have a great time and it's still not going to be as fast as you know the charge strike uh fury's on but it's variety that i can have fun with and all of that stuff so i think i think this is actually really solid for impale actually makes it a skill i want to use fen speed increased by a hundred percent reduced the rollback frames values between each attack um Okay, so I guess their thought is by improving the speed, it will decrease the issue uh, of Fen just being kind of buggy and broken and you not doing a lot of stuff, right? So, Fen more maybe in, in line with like a zeal or, or something. We'll see how it works in practice. This is one I'll definitely have to test. Um Power Strike removed synergy from Lightning Fury. Lightning Bolt synergy increased from 10 to 14. Crit Strike and Charge Strike synergy increased. Hmm. Okay. Charge Strike and Lightning Strike. So they have removed the Lightning Fury skill synergy. So this is saying you can run a pure Stabby Zon. Because again, you can run Charge Strike with like a spear and you would still have to invest in lightning fury anyways um, for the synergy right there so now this is I mean this is interesting in two ways and this is something I think we should also really note the synergy points from going from 10 to 14 percent is pretty massive now at the very end it's not going to be different, I would imagine. I mean, it actually will be a little bit more percent because that should be 10% as well. And this is an additional 12%, right? Something like that. Well, I'd have to do it. What's 14 times 3 versus 10 times 4? Oh, crap. But <laughs> uh, is, that, is that the same total? Let me bring the calculator. No, you're getting plus 2% more. 40 versus 42. So it actually ends up being slightly stronger in the end. But additionally, along the way, it's actually NA math. Shut up. Additionally, along the way, 
you're going to be getting more strength faster, which I think is the important thing to note, right? Because before, you had to go through all four of those synergies to really get there. Now, you're just going through three. So on top of, I know we'll get to the 20 saved points, but I'm just saying the first few points that I'm putting into synergies are going to be worth a lot more. So now everything that is getting a buff like this is actually going to be stronger through the game. Like literally in normal, nightmare, hell, as you're leveling up, it is going to be stronger through the game uh, right there. And so that's actually a really big buff. That's actually huge. Um, plus, you get 20 more points. So now you can spec around, which it seems like that's kind of a focus that they were talking about before when we, when we were discussing. They wanted builds to be a little more variable and a little more open to you be able to shift around, run dual specs a little bit easier, all of that stuff. Um, so this is, this is a... That's a really big buff. Poison Jab. The skill's damage scaling at high levels has been slightly adjusted. Casting Delay will no longer share its cooldown with other skills. And Tooltip is now updated. Plague Javelin. Poison Duration is now fixed at 3 seconds. Poison Javelin Synergy increased from 10 to 14%. Wow, Poison Duration now fixed at 3 seconds. That's huge for just getting that damage out. Cast delay reduced from 4 seconds to 1 second. Thank God. The casting delay on Plague Javelin was just terrible. Casting delay is no longer share. And tooltip is now updated. We wanted to give more advantages for using Amazon melee skills. So we're freeing up skill synergy reliance on Lightning Fury. Which will make Lightning Melee skills a cheaper skill point alternative to build around. Also, we are improving the power of the lesser used melee skills. Such as Impale and Fend. Um, lastly, Plague Javelin has received improvements with casting delay, damage, energy, and duration scaling to further diversify its usage compared to Poison Javelin. So, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Also, Charge Strike now synergizes with itself. Amazing. Uh, no, this is supposed to say Lightning Strike. They just, they need to change the, the wording. Um, passive and Magic Skills. Inner Sight, the skill's radius has been increased by 35%. Okay, I don't know if people are still going to use or use it, but something. Slow Missile, Missile Slow now scales instead of staying at a flat base of 33%. Oh my god. I felt like Slow Missile was already really strong with if you just well, didn't have a use, but it was strong. Radius has been increased by 35%. And this skill will now reduce enemy missile damage based on skill level. Wow. Maybe a counter to archers? Ooh. That's actually kind of nice. Banned PvP skill as well. 100%. Um, Valkyrie. Casting delay reduced from 6 seconds to 0.6 seconds. That's also huge. Because there was nothing worse than casting your Valkyrie, her dying in two seconds, and having to run around in four seconds uh, while you waited. Um, <laughs> so, now you can just keep casting her. Casting lay no longer shared, and tooltip updated. Also, probably has some effect in PvP as well, with just being able to cast those over and over. Avoid, the animation can now be interrupted and will no longer lock out the Amazon from performing other actions. Okay, well that's nice that they're, hopefully this fixes it. Um, we wanted to add some quality of life changes to certain paths magic skills. We improved the radius of mirror sight and slow missile, and we gave more reason to invest skill points for slow missile. Also, we want to alleviate the disadvantage of the animation lockout from using the dodge and avoid skills so that players are more willing to spend points on these skills. So dodge and avoid. I skipped dodge, yeah. Have both got the same thing. Dodge avoid bug fixed? Tested in PTR. God, that would be nice. Bow and crossbow skills. Freezing arrow. Mana cost per level reduced from 0.5 to 0.25. I think that's nice. Freezing arrow was just very expensive mana-wise, and saving a little bit for playing through the game I think will be useful. 
Magic Arrow. Increase the amount of physical damage converted to magic damage for the base level and per level. Okay, just a little boost there. Guided Arrow. Damage bonus increase from 5% to 7%. A little bit extra. It, it was a little bit weaker. Um, but PvP, that's going to be... Guided Arrow going to get a nice buff there for strength. Strafe? Uh, yeah, no infinite pierce. They didn't bring that back, I guess. Remove the 25% weapon damage reduction from this skill. Wow, Strafe gets a nice bonus too. Also gives increased attack rating with plus 30% baseline and 9% per level. Ooh, Strafe getting the buff. Really helping the uh, physicals on there. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. Um, you know, physical zons playing through the game needed a little bit of extra fun, I think. I'm good with it, especially with the attack rating. Fire arrow, mana cost no longer increases per level. Exploding arrow, damage scaling increases by about 50% for higher skill levels. Okay, that's good because the lower skill levels, it was already strong enough. Fire arrow synergy increased from 12% to 14%. And a mana cost reduction as well. And I'm actually very happy with this because, again, the mana cost for um, these skills was just too too high for, for, for the elemental bow skills. I mean, I jam so many points in energy when I'm playing through the game with these bows on. And I probably still w will put some, but it was just so much. So I'm actually happy that they're lowering the mana cost. Immolation Arrow, average fire damage per second scaling increased by about 100%. Whew. Casting delay no longer shared, mana cost reduced. We'll see if it makes it usable. We'll see. Fireball skills are receiving damage scaling improvements at higher levels so that they consistently fulfill their fire elemental damage type roles for their level tier. Also, mana costs were reduced for elemental arrows to give them more general usage. Strafe will no longer have weapon damage reduction. It will also provide attack rating so it can have distinct advantages over the other physical bow skills. Nice. No multi-shot love? No, nope, multi-shot is staying the same, it appears. Alright, that is the Amazon. Overall, I mean, pretty positive changes, I feel like. Charge Strike has just gotten even stronger, which is kind of crazy. Um, but there is the addition now with the 20 extra points and the little additional bonus that you're getting it's very nice very nice for sure boazons maybe getting a little bit more of a comeback um dodge and evade avoid bug fixed valkyrie casting slowed down i think amazon is exciting i'm, I'm very happy for that i really want to try some boazon stuff let's move on assassin Martial Arts. Fist of Fire. Attack rating bonus increased. 15 to 25% baseline. 7 to 10% per level. Same with Claws. And Blades of Ice. And Tiger Strike. And Cobra Strike. And Phoenix Strike. So just more attack rating. Which honestly is good because she needed more attack rating. And Phoenix Strike. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's a good start. Maybe uh, the assassin can actually hit some things now. Dragon Talon now consumes only one of each martial arts charge when cast. So it seems this is the new way they're going about it. When you uh, explode and let everything off, you're not going to explode all of your charges, but simply one charge at a time. Um, but a bigger one now always hits the target if the assassin has any martial arts charges. So that's interesting. And that's true for all of these finishing. Dragon Claw, damage bonus increased. Damage bonus per level increased for Dragon Tail. And for Dragon Flight, also casting delay removed. So, let's see. Martial arts skills are receiving a significant change with having finishing moves. Only consume one of each charge instead of all three at once. We feel like this will allow martial arts to perform smoother during combat by better maintaining current charges instead of having to reacquire them too often. That's a teleport. Yeah. Um, 
In addition to this, we're increasing attack rating for charge up skills to complement the smoothness of gaining and spending charges. Lastly, we want to improve payoff for the lesser used finishing move skills. Seems like I, it seems fun. It seems like now I can like teleport all around with my dragon flight from pack to pack and then always be hitting and building charges and you're just going to be hit kick hit kick, you know like you're going to be you're going to be doing a little bit more how it works in theory versus how it works practically i think still needs to be explored um but i'm at least excited to try it this seems like a fun style to play so we'll see uh, Shadow Disciplines Fade, now updated to show the physical damage or reduction. That's good. A lot of people didn't know that it also gave you physical damage reduction. Venom, buff duration scaling level per, per level changed from 4 to 12 seconds, which is nice because Venom always dropped off too fast. Shadow Warrior, casting delay reduced. And same with Shadow Master, so same thing like the Valkyrie. We felt Shadow just, just Disciplines are generally widely used and effective. That's true. But we wanted to add some quality of life changes, so we added tooltip clarity, buff duration, consistency improvements, and casting delay changes. Traps. Uh, removed synergy from death sentry skill. Oh, sorry, shockweb. Remove the synergy from the death sentry skill. Okay. Charge bolt synergy increased from 11 to 17%. Lightning sentry synergy increased from 11 to 17%. Wow, it's a big increase. But I guess because they're removing this. So again, same sort of thing. Charge Bolt Sentry, also getting stronger. Lightning Sentry, also getting stronger. It's going to be the same at the end, but it's going to be stronger in the way through. Right? Same thing like the Zon, but this is... Uh, yeah, so Lightning Sentry is going to be even stronger in the middle, which is crazy. So very similar, though, in what you're getting. Um, removed synergy from death sentry skill for fire blast. And then again, same sort of thing, just boosting that a little bit more. Wake of fire just increased the damage from the synergies. Wake of inferno increased as well and actually increased a lot for wake of inferno. Wow. Um, Blade Sentinel. Casting delay reduced from 2 second to 1 second. Ooh, that's nice. Casting delay will no longer share its cooldown with other skills that have casting delays. Tooltip updated. Missile speed increased by 20%. Weapon damage increased from 37 to 75%. Blade Fury Synergy added 10% damage per level. And Blade Shield Synergy added 10% damage per level. Yo! Bladeson, come on, let's go. Are you kidding me? That's gonna, dude, that is so much extra damage. You now can cast them twice as often, faster, double damage, and another 400% damage. What? The damage is. <laughs> like 11 times the amount? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. What? Blade Assassin, new build I'm trying. Blade Fury also getting the massive damage add. Wow. Okay, Blade Shield, duration baseline increased from 20 seconds to 120 seconds. Duration scaling increased from 5 to 12, also matching. Weapon damage increased from 25 to 75%. And the additional damage here! It's gonna be so strong! What? So now I just run around and just everything dies? Bladeson is gonna pop off! There's no way! <laughs> this sounds too good to be true. Absolutely sounds too good to be true. I love the Blade Assassin. 
Lama, don't play it. Don't show them. I know. I love the Blade Assassin. I've done a Blade Assassin playthrough before, and I was like, oh, I wish it was just a little bit better. I still wish they made Blade Fury a better skill to use. But now I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to be casting Blade Sentinels and Blade Shield everywhere. And what in the world? The damage is so much. With trap skills, there's multiple under use of skills that can be more effective rather than improved synergy distribution. For lightning and fire traps, you're freeing up synergy reliance on death sentry to give more build possibilities elsewhere, which is interesting. Also, fire traps are receiving damage synergy improvements to make them more effective at higher difficulties. Lastly, the blade skills are receiving multiple improvements to make them more viable to dedicate builds around these skills. Wow. Wow, I gotta... Oh, I want to try this so bad. First character in PTR, mate, probably. Jesus. Barbarian. Update to display radius, radius. Damage increased by 30% on Warcry. Whoa, Shout Barb getting a boost. All right. Sing, Sing Barb getting a little extra oomph. Shout Duration baseline increase. Battle command. Duration baseline increase. That one's actually good. Grim Ward. Radius baseline value increased. Now also slows and increases damage taken for nearby enemies. Fine potion synergy added plus 5% damage taken per level. So now you can run even more of a support barb. All right. Uh, we're adding more tooltip descriptions to Warcry's for clarifications on hill and skill mechanics, shout and battle orders, command, blah, blah, blah. Updated for Warcry, we want to make it more effective and rewarding to use at higher difficulties. Lastly, with Grim Ward, we are adding a new functionality and synergy to give more reason to use the skill, which also gives more reason to spend skill points on find potion. Okay. Throwing Mastery adds the chance to pierce. I think that's good. Now you can have more pierce with your throws and that'd be fun. I like it. Big boost for a throw barb there. And combat skills. Speed of the leap motion increased by 75%. So you no longer get the... <gasps> Doo -doo. <laughs> uh, I wonder... I think it's just the speed of the leap motion. I don't think the actual leap at a short mark is going to be faster, though. I don't think it'll go like... <laughs> I don't think that's what it was. Speed of lead motion increased. Damage baseline increased from 100 to 200. Attack rating increased. Attack rating for level increased. Leap synergy damage increased. They're trying to make the leap attack barb a thing again. Kind of fun. Berserk. Shout synergy replaced with battle orders. Okay. Very nice. Double throw. Added damage. Because, yeah, why would you have this boost to defense when when you're berserking your defense goes to zero it actually doesn't really make sense uh double throw added damage bonus with 16 percent baseline and eight percent in damage increase per level wow really trying to make throw barb uh, a thing here frenzy increase stamina synergy adds plus 4.4 seconds per level we want to make sleep skills move a lot faster so that they're less awkward to use. Leap attack is receiving bare scaling to make it more reliable damage skill to build around. For Berserk, the existing shout synergy is changing the battle orders because the defense loss from the skill contradicts the usage of shout. Yeah, exactly. And this will bear connect with their skin she build possibilities. Double thrill now is a baseline damage increase, so it will not purely rely on synergies for damage. Lastly, Frenzy is receiving a new synergy from the lesser used increased stamina skill to give more reasons to invest skill points there and add new build diversity. Overall, fun stuff for the Barb. Not a ton of things. Barb was already in a pretty good spot for a lot of the stuff. The only thing I wish I wish was that Whirlwind had a buff at the lower levels. I'm I'm very sad that Whirlwind has been neglected again. Uh the the massive damage reduction and everything at the start first level of Whirlwind and all that, it just is that was my least favorite playthrough of everything I've played through was Whirlwind. So I'm kind of sad 
that it's not getting buffed. Late game whirlwind with all the gear is still fine, but early whirlwind and everything up into it, it's rough. I wish they did something there. Otherwise, not bad. Elemental skills, druid. Firestorm no longer has the casting. Molten boulder, missile speed increased by 100%. Wow. And range decrease. So the overall travel length remains the same. Casting delay reduced from two seconds to one second. Actually huge. And slight volcano synergy increased. This is actually a really big buff to Molten Boulder. Fissure just doesn't have the casting share. Uh, Molten Boulder synergy increased from 12 to 16% on Volcano. So just trying to make Volcano maybe a little bit more useful. Armageddon. Casting delay has been removed for this skill. Physical damage significantly increased. Tooltip update shows it. Volcano synergy changed to increase physical damage instead of fire damage and increased from 14 to 18%. Wow. Yeah, I think you're right. It should be misarranged decreased by 50% is what they mean to say. Because 100% would be the entire range. I agree. So Armageddon still probably doesn't hit anything and still does nothing. Because it just doesn't drop fast enough. Um, Arctic Blast removes synergy from Hurricane. Base damage and level scaling increased by 100%. Also, to compensate for the incorrect damage scaling calculation of the past, controls are updated so the skill now casts in free form and no longer locks onto one target at a time. Still probably garbage, but we'll see. Cyclone armor can now be cast while in werewolf or werebear form. Yay! Twister damage scaling increased by 50%. Arctic blast synergy added plus 20% stun duration per level. Ooh. Hurricane casting delay now removed. Can now be cast while in werewolf or werebear form. Can we teleport in werebear and werewolf form though? With casting delay changes, druid fire skills are generally going to be more widely used. They really want to make fire druid a thing. In addition, we're increasing the physical damage scaling for fire skills to be a reliable alternative damage source. We felt that Arctic Blast is generally lacking power, so we're increasing the damage scaling. Uh, reducing the signature requirements up to free up skill points and improving the general player controls to allow for smoother freeform targeting. Additionally, we wanted to complement the Arctic Blast changes with improvements to Twister to add more build possibilities. Lastly, we're allowing shapeshift forms to cast each of the elemental buff skills to avoid the current hassle of having to change forms continuously to maintain these active buffs. Werewolf, now updated to display casting delay. Rabies, attack rating bonus increased. Poison Creeper synergy increased. Trying to make it a little stronger. Fury, attack rating bonus increased. Maul, damage bonus increased. And, wow, a big attack rating bonus increase. 20 to 40% baseline and 10 to 15% per level. Which I'm okay with, again. Uh, Shockwave, Maul synergy increased from 5 to 10%. Fire Claws, damage increased by 75%, but removing the synergies. Fire Claw gonna slap. Werewolf skills are receiving attack rate improvements to help melee gameplay. For Fire Claws, we wanted to reduce the heavy skill point synergy cost to open more build possibilities. Werebear skills are receiving damage improvements to make them more viable for higher difficulties. Interesting. No mention of fixing Fury animation desync. I did not see anything with that, no. Summoning skills, Oak Sage, min and max life values are average to always be the same, accurate to the tooltip. Yeah, the summons could have min, they, they would have a random health value when you summoned them, and you didn't know what it was. But physical damage resist increased to 25% and decreased to 25%. Because before, a lot of people didn't know this, uh, these summons were 100% physical damage resistant in Nightmare. It was very weird. Zero, 100, and then zero again. So now it's 25% across the board. Um, yeah, a lot of people didn't know that. Heart of the Wolverine, same thing. And Spirit of the Barb, same thing. Aura no longer returns a percentage of damage when hit. Now the aura will deal a flat amount of damage when the aura-affected targets are attacked. 
So they're changing. Uh, they're changing that how thorns works. We'll see how it how it does. Raven has a big change. Number of hits per Raven reduced from 12 to 5 and no longer increases per level. But attack rating bonus per level increased from 15 to 30%. And modified the AI so they attack more often. Damage level scaling significantly increased. 20. They added three synergies of 12% damage per level. Bird Druid is now a thing. Uh, I think this their idea is we wanted to give summon druids a thing to do. I believe this is the uh, the thing. It was like before you didn't have like a curse or anything to cast, and you just kind of everything just kind of floated around, and you just waited. Now you're constantly casting the ravens; they're hitting, dying off, and then you're casting them again, so they'll keep going through, and massive damage. Maybe I mean, we're gonna have to see. Uh, what the damage is like. Because this is a ton of damage. I mean, seriously. This is what? 720% more damage on top of the damage level scaling increase? We'll see. Spirit Wolves. Now deal cold damage and chill for a duration. Provides utility with chilling and acts as an alternate damage type compared to Dire Wolves. Damage level scaling increased. Base, base life increased by about 80%. Wow. Life now increases 10% per level. So really trying to make the Spirit Wolf a thing that you can actually use and will want to use. Dire Wolf. Level scaling for damage increased by about 30%. Base life increased by 90%. Life synergy reduced from 25 to 15%. This is because the base life was increased. And Spirit Wolf and Grizzly life now gain life per level. And Summon Grizzly, base life increased by roughly 15%, with a life increase now 10% per level. Grizzly kind of obsolete now, right? I'm using these Wolves. Poison Creeper, poison damage level scaling significantly increased. Life scaling increased by 100%. That was needed because these Creepers just die so fast. And Rabies Synergy added. Carrion Vine... Uh, life recovery has been reworked to be plus 1% healing per level instead of a diminishing calculation ranging from 3 to 12%. I'll just trust whatever that means is better. Solar Creeper, mana recovery has been reworked to be plus 3% mana baseline with 1% mana per level instead of the diminishing calculation. Okay. There are plenty of druid summons that could be improved to better build around. In general, all summons will no longer have hidden randomized health values, so the tooltip is more accurate and summons perform more consistently. Ravens are getting significant changes to help them function as a spell-like skill for summoning druids to use, and this includes damage scaling buffs and new synergies from other summons to fuel their damage. Wolves are getting improvements to give them more of an identity as damage dealing summons the spirit summons are receiving physical damage resist change across each difficulty each difficulty making them survive more consistently spirit of barbs is receiving changes to thorns to make it a more reliable source of damage lastly each creeper creeper summons are receiving improvements to give more reason to invest skill points and to have them perform better at high levels i mean this is a lot of change to summons and now I also want to make a Summon Druid and see how it actually performs. Because Summon Druid was already a build I kind of really liked. With a little bit of help. Like if you add a few skillers, a few extra plus to skills, all of that stuff. It was actually a fun build to kind of play through the game with. Um, and it was actually decent. So it's not like the strongest build in the game or anything like that. But it was kind of fun. But now it's like... Oh, man. Now we got these big old ravens. and uh, I mean, there's some, there's some stuff. We'll see. Necromancer. Summoning skills. Raise skeletal mage. Percentage HP per level increase from 7 to 10%. Poison total damage scaling increased by about 750%. Poison duration no longer scales and now lasts 4 seconds. <laughs> Cold damage scaling increased about 50%. Lightning damage scaling increased about 5%. The tooltip will now just probably display. Uh, 
I mean, it feels like Diablo 3 values, but at the same time, skeletal mages were so pathetic. Um, they'll still die in one shot, and I still don't know if they'll be useful. Mages were horrible, you guys. We'll see what happens. Blood Golem now gains max life per level. Okay. Thorns Golem no longer returns a percentage. Now it's the new Thorns with the flat damage. Holy Fire level bonus per level increased from 1 to 2. Ooh, for Fire Golem. So we're going to have a nice uh, level 40 hold Holy Fire at, at level 20. Could be nice. Uh, yeah, 0 times 750 is still 0, you guys. We saw a good opportunity to improve less used summons for the Necromancer. Mages have received significant damage scaling improvements. So their elemental damage value is more consistent. Cold damage is more effective but slightly weaker than fire because of its chill utility. Poison damage is much more reliable with a fixed duration and better damage scaling. Blood Golem and Fire Golem are receiving damage improvements to make them more competitive with the other golems. Iron Golem is changing how the Thorns Aura deals damage. Damage. Poison and Necro. Poison and Bone. Damage absorbed per level increase from 10 to 15. Okay. Puts a little bit more in line with uh, how it had with synergies. So you would actually invest here instead of the other ones if you wanted, maybe. Bone Spear. They've just increased all of these synergies. Wow. PvP people are in shambles. Holy cow. Uh, I mean, the Necro playing through the game was always a little weak with Bone Spear and Bone Spirit. Um, but for PvP endgame, this is going to be a lot of damage. PvM, he still feels a little weak, though. I agree. PvP, I don't play enough PvP, but I imagine, I feel like they already talk about Bone Necro being strong. So, you know, that's that's significant. That's definitely significant changes. And that's a nice, I mean, that's a nice bonus for, you know, the PVM. Um, help boost it along a little bit more and be just a little bit stronger. Bone skills are generally well performing. We start an opportunity to improve synergy bonuses to better scale in the late game. And make their heavy skill point investment more valuable. Additionally, bone armor is receiving better damage absorbed scaling to make it more rewarding to spend points on the skill itself instead of relying too heavily on its synergies. Curses. Weaken. Damage reduction now scales based on level, from just 33% to now 33% and 1% per level. So they're trying to give you some idea, and I think they're just testing it with weaken. Yeah, for the skill weaken, we add a new damage reduction scaling to give more reason to spend additional points on the skill and give it a more powerful identity. Because everything is still just... One point wonders all over the place there. So maybe now there's some idea of, you know, boosting it. Uh, and maybe they'll try and get you to spend more than one point in a curse. I'm not sure I'm still going to ever spend one point, more than one point in a curse. But it's an interesting idea, at least, to test. Paladin. They now display the max resist bonus. That's good. That's it for defensive auras. Offensive auras display the bonus for the passive attack rating. Uh, Holy Fire, area damage now scales based on the distance of the enemy to the caster. It will now deal range from 100% damage to 200% based on the furthest distance to the closest distance to the caster. Damage level scaling increased by about 90%. Wow. Resist Fire synergy increased from 18 to 24% and Salvation from 6 to 10%. So they're really, they're just trying to to buff fire. Holy fire paladin. And this goes in line with them trying to bring fire back into late game. Holy freeze, they have done the same thing. Closer to caster, more damage. And same with holy shock. Wow. Does this mean Tesladin is just even more stupid? Good lord. Also, Fire Golem gets this boost as well, right? So now you have a level 40 Holy Fire on a Fire Golem standing next to everything? Good lord, that could be so strong. That might be too good. 
Thorns, now it does the flat damage instead. Sanctuary, area now damages based on distance to caster. Will now deal range 100 to 200%. Um, did they fix Sanctuary to actually add damage though? Because it, it didn't before, it was actually bugged. I hope so. We want to add more potential to the AoE damage aura since they're in a capable way of a paladin to handle groupable groups of monsters. Increasing damage based on distance caster. Each OE damage aura will have increased effectiveness while still maintaining the same distance, same cadence of visual FFX on the screen. We also saw holy fire should scale better at higher skill levels to be consistent with general fire damage. For thorns, we want to improve the gameplay around getting hit to deal damage or making the skill deal flat damage based on attack attempts rather than returning damage after getting hit. This allowed thorns allows thorns to have a more consistent combat performance instead of unpredictable and risky results. Wait. Instead of getting hit, it's based on attack attempt. So even if they don't hit you, they still take damage? What? Huge buff. All right. Works with block as well? I know. Your 75% block with 30k defense Thorns Paladin now just stands and everything dies. Maybe a boost to armor as well for it. Okay, sacrifice damage to self now reduces per level from 8% down to 1%. Probably irrelevant. Also, if they didn't fix the sacrifice bug of its range and stuff, it's not going to... Useful. Conversion. Max conversion chance increased from 50% to 90%. Convert the world. Smite shows that it always hits. Holy Bolt. Remove synergy. Blessed Hammer. Damage increased by 50%. Now pierces targets. Pair synergy increased from 15 to 20%. Interesting. And that makes it worse for Paladins. That are trying to fight wave two. Because now they don't get that blessed hammer synergy. But the damage is already increased by 50%. And it has a piercing. So it's probably still nice. And you get the holy bolt conga line. Uh, Fist of the heavens. Casting delay reduced from one second to 0.4 seconds. No longer shares. Tooltip now updated. Holy bolts now pierce targets. No longer forces you to attack when out of mana, thank god, and improve targeting functionality for auto-acquiring enemies. Bro, is Fist of Heaven's PvP going to be stupid now? Maybe. We wanted to improve the lesser-used combat skills to get more viable options. Holy Bolt now Pierce. To increase its combat use cases, we'll have less skill point synergy investment to open up more possibilities to spend skill points elsewhere. Fist of the Heavens is also getting some Holy Bolt Pierce changes. We'll now have less casting delay. PvP meta getting changed, man. That's a massive boost. Also makes me wonder if it's now potentially viable in PvM. It's still probably not going to be great, but maybe has a little bit added. Sorceress. Frost Nova damage scaling increased by about 25%. I don't think this was needed. Nothing for Blizzard, nothing for Frozen Orb, just the casting delays. Frozen Armor, base duration increase. Shiver Armor, base duration increase. And damage scaling increased. They just want to make you have other armors to use. Chilling Armor, damage scaling increased 200%. Duration bonus increased 6 to 12. Chill Length bonus per level for level 16 plus increased from 1 to 2 seconds, matching Shiver Armor. Defense baseline from 45 to 60. Defense bonus, seven, 5 to 7, 7 to 9, 7 to 9. So once again, really trying to increase. I still think Frozen Armor is still just going to be the best based on how it works. But they're trying. With Cold Armor skills, we want further diversify them by ensuring that each has distinct advantages. After these changes, Chilling Armor will have the greatest defense bonus and damage potential while still only triggering, triggering on ranged attacks. Also, Frost Nova is receiving damage average or damage scaling improvements to give it more power where it was lacking in the later game. I just don't think Frost Nova needs to exist in the later game. I think it's perfect for where it is. Um, yeah, the removal of shared delay is, is big for Source as well. Uh, Nova, static field synergy added, 5% damage per level. 
So trying to make Nova Sorceress a little bit more of a thing. Also, Thunderstorm gets a static shield, a uh, static field synergy. Duration increased from 32 seconds to 144, and the level increased from 8 to 24. Wow. So Nova Thunderstorm build, new build. And tooltip update for energy shield. We saw an opportunity to add new synergies for less use lightning skills to increase their damage potential and create new skill build possibilities. My goodness. Fire skills. Base damage and level scaling by about 75% increased <laughs> to compensate for the previous mess up. Warmth synergy increased. Controls are updated. Mana cost reduced from 7 to 4. And range baseline increased 75%. Wow, it's going to be so long. Still probably terrible, but fun. Blaze. Damage scaling increased by about 60%. Wow, Blaze is already so strong. Warmth from 4 to 6%. Removes synergy from Firewall. Now increases run-walk speed by 2% per level. Blaze Sorceress. I love Blaze. This is one of my favorite sorceresses to, to make. Um, wow. It's a funny build still, but now it's a... I mean, that's massive. It already was so strong at, at killing, honestly. Huh. It's a thing. Firewall, no update there. Meteor, no update. Just the cast delay, which is a big update still. And Hydra, casting delay removed. Limited max number of Hydra groups to 6. Firebolt synergy increased from 3 to 5. Fireball synergy increased from 3 to 5. Hydra is actually a thing now? That's actually big, removing that cast delay. Because that was the problem before. It just took so long to get your stupid Hydras up, you couldn't do any damage. Now, you just go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. 6 Hydras up? Actually, maybe okay. Hydra viable secondary skill now? Maybe. Maybe. We want to improve the lesser used fire skills and give more reasons to use them. Inferno is receiving player control improvements with three-form casting, like Arctic Blast, better damage scaling. Blaze is an often ignored skill, not by me. So we want to free up synergy requirements and provide more utility and power with damage increases and a new runwalk speed buff for extra utility. Lastly, with Hydra, we want to improve gameplay of summoning Hydras to make it easier to use and skill combat the skill in combat situations. The removal of casting delay and new limitations on max hydras will match the maximum hydra count achievable from before the changes, but now players will have a much easier time to summon that amount. Wow. I mean, honestly, I'm already wanting to like run a blaze sorceress as my secondary, like my fire skill, but for some like time when I'm running around, you know, if I'm, if I'm farming like open areas, Right? I'm farming the flare jungle. I just light up blaze and then I just run around and, you know, have fun and murder everything with my blaze. Um, while I'm, like, using blizzard or something. Ultimately, it's still not great because you're going to be teleporting so much that there's not enough running. But, I like it. Mercenaries. Hiring a mercenary in expansion will now always offer mercenaries that match your character's level instead of having a randomized level difference from your character's level. Wow! That match your character's level. What about at level 99, though? Because you can't get a level 99 mercenary. Big change. Updated each stat. <laughs> Can you now? New bug? Maybe. Updated each stat to have skill gains and each difficulty to match. There is no disadvantage of leveling up a hell difficulty merc versus a normal difficulty mercenary. Um... I thought there wasn't that. I thought that was already fixed. Was that not fixed? I could have sworn that this actually was fixed. It wasn't? Oh, well, who knows? <laughs> Two different bugs? Oh, okay. It was a second bug. They fixed the first one. Got it. 
Cold arrow, added freezing arrow. Fire arrow, added explosion arrow. Wow. Big changes. Rogue Archer is now getting new flavored range skills that will scale as she levels up. These new skills should improve her AoE and thus make her more effective range damage dealer. We got AoE on these uh, on these girls now. Freeze is really nice too right there. Yum. And now, yeah, some of that piercing gear, wisdom, things like that maybe make sense as things that you can give your mercenary because now you can give the chance or mist... Freeze with mist, 100% chance to pierce. Now putting that on a mercenary with freezing arrow or exploding arrow. Wow. That's actually interesting. That makes more sense now. She can't use Bereza. She can't use a crossbow. Right? I don't believe Act 1 mercenaries can use crossbows. Um, no, she cannot, yeah. So now you can use Mist Bow, though, and that actually will work there. Which is why they probably made Mist in a Hydra Bow instead of in a, a GMB, because they were they were having the thought that they'll put it into uh, a Mercenary slot. Updated each stat slash skill gain and each difficulty to match. There's no disadvantage of leveling. Okay, that thing. And then Nightmare and Hell difficulty now have all six different aura types available from the higher menu. We don't have to go back to Nightmare anymore! Yay! Normal is unchanged, so you still can't get Might and Holy Freeze from Normal. That's actually nice. Thorns now has the new way that Thorns deal. The Desert Mercenary is already popular, but we saw an opportunity to add some quality of life improvements by allowing players to hire all the auras with the general improvement of Thorns. We want to improve level scaling to make this type more meaningful. Iron Wolf, Act 3. Uh huh. Um, life baseline and scaling increased by about 25%. Now it's life similar to the Rogue Archer. Yeah, Act 3 were very low life and weak. Defense baseline increased by about 40%. Now has also similar to that. And resistance baseline and scaling increased by about 20%. Now is the highest resistance baseline compared to other mercenaries. Cold now cast Glacial Spike more often. Glacial Spike leveling increased. And frozen armor level scaling increased. Fire removed Inferno, praise be. Added fire bolt. Oh, not fire bolt. Oh, there. And increased the chance of casting fire ball. Also, added enchant. Now the Iron Wolf will enchant himself, the player, and nearby allies. Wow. And then... Added static field to the lightning one. Charge bolt level scaling increased and increased chance of casting lightning. Holy cow. These devs have lost their minds. And yeah, we just got that plus three to fire skills helm. So you just beef up your act three mercenary and let him enchant you with all these plus fire skills. Oh my goodness. You can get what? Plus eight to skills? Or something like that? Bye, Wahid. Nice knowing ya. Plus nine? What can you have on the armor? There's no plus three fire skill armor, is there? Ormus. All right. I stand corrected. Oh my god. Act 3 Mercenary can use a shield too. Uh, you're just... Oh, he's going to be so strong. Wait, but no. Ormus... Will Ormus work? Does he get the plus 3? I think he... I. Th that works. It's plus 2... They don't get plus other things if it's like for sorcerers. What is it? No, but it's sor sorceress only. It says it, but it does apply. Interesting. Okay. Regardless, we're just going to boost everything up. Wow. 
That's crazy. All right. Uh, act five. <clears throat> oh, yeah, let's read the things. Great amounts of sorcerers. We saw they've been underperforming. Yes. We improved their core stats. Um, for skills, we wanted to embrace their elemental fancy, so we decided to give new flavorful, flavorful utility skills to further incentivize reasons to want to use these mercenary types. I didn't skip lightning. Static field, charge bolt, and increased chance for lightning. I mean, my goodness. <clears throat> Crazy. Act 5 Barbarian Warrior. Same thing. Life baseline scaling increase. Now it's the most life compared to other mercenaries. Makes sense. Defense baseline increased. Has the highest uh, defense. Bash level scaling increased and will no longer be capped. Stun level scaling increased and will no longer be capped at 80. And added battle cry, which is huge because that's minus 39% damage or something. Uh, and lowers defense. We want to give the Barbarian Warrior more identity while still maintaining his Barbarian Fantasy. We decided to give him the Battle Cry skill as a new way for him to debuff enemies which should be provide prove to be a useful utility for players. In addition, we wanted to increase his life and defense scaling to ensure he's tougher mercenary type. Physical damage. It's a physical damage reduction, but that's big. Rune words. Oh my god. Insight. Can now be used with bows and crossbows. Wow! Insight on Act 1, Mercenary! What? Also, just for a... for a boson anyways. Like... Check out Insight. 200 to 260 ED? 180 to 250 bonus AR? 1 to 6 crit strike? Mana for kill? For Raltir Tal Soul? Bruh, I'm using this on my uh, level 27 Amazon. <laughs> Plus the added fire damage. and Yeah, this is a massive bow is on... And you get the meditation, of course. But this is massive for a boson to use. Physical boson to use mid-game. That's, that's huge. All right, new rune words. We've already talked about these. Um, so we just, all those videos already exist. But we've got Plague, Cham, Shale, Um, instead of Cham, Foul, Um. Swords only, though. Confirmed. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. I'm personally complaining about that. Make your own comments on it. Don't just follow what I'm saying. But I really think not having this for claws and maybe some other weapons is really painful. I think it loses a lot of value. But again... I mean, are they trying to just give it to to mercenaries? Maybe. It is one to two all skills, though. Pattern, the Talor Tholclaw, I think it's fine. Unbending Will seems really cool. Six Open Socket does limit it to just a couple of swords, really. You're going to have it in, like, a great sword or something when you're going through Executioner Sword. Um, but really nice damage. IAS there, 20 to 30. Um, Lifesteal. I mean, it's, it's a solid, solid uh, weapon for sure. Um, Wisdom, I still don't like that it costs pull rune. But I'm definitely seeing this as like something that I'm shoving on an Act 1 Mercenary or something early on maybe. mid. But I still, I don't know. I still just never, I never put the pull rune in it, I feel like. I just get the Raven Frost instead or something. I really hope they change that. <clears throat> Obsession. Wait, Obsession? What? We knew. What? Hold on. Zod is Lem Lum Io Nef. We have a new rune word. <laughs> 
Another Zod Runeward. Indestructible, of course. 24% chance to guess level 10 weakened when struck. Okay. Plus 4 to all skills. 65% FCR. 60% FHR. Knockback, vitality, energy. Increased max life 15 to 25%. Wow. Regen mana. All res 60 to 70. 75% extra gold from monsters and 30% MF. Okay, so you always have to just do a comparison of this versus spirit plus whatever, right? So plus four to skills, Hodo and spirit basically is, is the calculation. So... Hodo gives you you can get plus three auto mods. This is true. But let's take a look. So Hodo is three skills. Oh my god, stop doing this. 40 FCR. 30, let's say 40 all res. That's pretty much it. And then Spirit is two skills, 55 FHR, 35 FCR. What's the resistances on Spirit? No fire res, which is one thing. Uh, 35. 35 light slash cold slash poison. And then 22 vitality, 89 to 112 mana, so you know, 100 mana roughly. So, let's take a look. That overall is plus 5 to skills, so you lose one skill with this staff, but you can get your, your mods on the staff itself. So it could be like a plus 3 to blizzard staff or something like that. Which is actually cool, because then you're getting the addition. You're losing 10 FCR. You go from 75 to 65. You gain 5 hit recovery, which is actually nice. You don't have to carry that 5% charm, because 60 is a break point. 10 vitality. You lose 12 vitality, and you lose a lot of mana. But you gain 15 to 25% life. Which is actually sick. I mean, 25% life is really big. On top of, you don't need 156 strength anymore, which is another, like, 50 to vitality or whatever it is. So that's another 100 life. So you're actually gaining life there. Resistances, you have 75 cold, light, poison, and 40 fire. Now you have 60 to 70 of all, so that's pretty much the same. 30% MF and 75 gold find, whatever. 30% MF is a nice little thing. Man. You don't, no, you don't block as a sorceress, so that's not a thing you care about. Now, I mean, this is, this is crazy. It is a Zod, though. I know. Versus Pole Vex. So, that is one thing. I feel like the max life and the fact that it can be in a staff with plus three to skills is ve a very big boost. If I get a plus three to Nova staff, now I have plus seven to Nova. You know, a plus three to, to Nova... Um, plus three to Thunderstorm staff or something. 
Now I, I have... Yeah, this is like a fun item to hunt. Or plus energy shield. But I mean, you're, you're probably using your memory for your pre-buff anyways, so that doesn't matter. Though, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it just sounds really interesting. I really want to go in and feel and see what this, like, this is probably the, the, the big part about it. Now, of course, yeah, and you do have this chance to cast level 10 weaken, which is a 43% damage reduction, 24% of the time. So that's actually really, like, overlooked almost. I, I really want to go back and focus on how good this is at 24%. actually really big hmm now it's not going to outperform like death fathom so i don't think cold sorceresses are going to be using this because you're just going to lose a lot of damage there but hardcore this might be the staff to go after, honestly. Between the weaken, the max life, uh, the the nice res. And I really think for sure we're going to see stuff with like light sorceresses using this in some ways. Storm shield is safer than this. I mean, you can run max block storm shield for it. But, I don't know. I still like the idea of using this there. Getting that chance for weaken in the big life. You're not having to put all the points, I mean, put points in decks and stuff either. You're just going for really tanky with that. Man, obsession. Okay. Moving on. Flickering flame. Already saw it. I like it. And mist. Level 8 to 12 concentration. Did we know it was 8 to 12 or did we think it was just 8? I think we did, but still weaker than pride there. But this now makes more sense as Act 1 mercenary. I think this is a really solid thing for that piercing, freezing attack and such. For new runers, we focus on complementing the skill and mercenary changes seen above, along with giving underused units more usage. Plague and power runers previously existed in data, but were never enabled. We made some additional tweaks, and they're now finally available. Um, wow. Yeah, and also you get the plus three, and then in a GMB, it's plus six to, to bow and crossbow skills. I mean, it's got some use there. New Haraja Cube Recipes. Ral, Soul, Perfect Emerald, plus Normal Set. Lum, Pole, Perfect Emerald, plus Exceptional Set. Tal, Shale, and Co, Lem, P, Diamond. So the same uh, stuff that we had before to get the elite versions of sets. So now we can upgrade your elite Saigons, your elite Deaths, and berserkers and all sorts of stuff all right we've helped players enjoy i mean this is nice for honestly upgrading like some belts when you're playing through the game i think would be really nice so you're not stuck with just like a light belt or something we felt players enjoy the current hydro cube recipes for upgrading unique items we decided to offer the same capability for upgrading set items this can add more possibilities by using lower level set items for more character builds yeah uh, Natalia's kicks in. There you go. Maybe. Set item bonus changes. Arcana's tricks increased 25 mana to 50, added regenerate mana 12%, and added plus one all skills to the full set. Probably still won't use it. Arctic gear, 64 colting damage. What? 
<laughs> six to four cold damage to two to 198 max cold damage plus two for character level. All right. Make it maybe a little bit useful, like just slightly longer. It's kind of fun. Um, Bull Cathos increased 20 fire damage to 200 fire damage for the full set. 25 to 200 full damage. Added 10 life stolen and 20% deadly strike. This is the two, two swords. Still, again, probably not very useful. But didn't remove knockback on the BK sword. Yeah, the knockback needs to be gone. Cathan's Traps added regenerate mana 16%. That's actually kind of fun. Severb's Vestments increased Fire Res 15 to 25, added a 25 bonus to AR, and added Defense for the full set as well. Cow Kings added more Defense, 100 Life, and plus one all skills. Wow, Cow Kings is already a good set, you guys. Cow Kings might actually be decent for the mid stuff. Like, it was already solid. Infernal Tools added Cannot Be Frozen and Maximum Mana 20%. Interesting, though. Infernal. Irathus Finery added 24% Piercing Attack. Huh. I actually like Irathus, so this is nice. Irathus set is actually good, like... Here's, here's what you have with Irathas. You already get faster run walk, dexterity, max all of the res, 20 to all res, and then the pieces are really nice. 15 all res with the two items for the for the amulet, which isn't the best, but the, the um, gloves, you get 20 IES, cold freeze, and half freeze duration. The crown with the dual res right there is nice, and the belt is not that great. Now, with, with the additional buffs, some piercing could actually be a thing. Millabregas added cannot be frozen to three items. Nice. And some added lightning damage for two items. Uh, yeah, Naj uh, Irathas was always kind of like a nice little budget piece there. Nages added 1 to 148% better chance of getting magic items for two items? Whoa! That's poggers. Cheap MF set for one year kind of early on? I like that. Increase replenish life plus 10 to plus 20. Added plus 2 fire skills and increased max life 12%. Yeah, I mean, you have a telly staff and the helmet or whatever you want. I mean, that's sick. I actually like that. Gives you that, that cheap, easy option to kind of get that. These are the things I really love. Because now I'm like, I'm going to look for nausea's early to just have a little bit. Sazabis added poison length reduced by 75%, added plus one to all skills for a full set, and added damage reduced by 16%. Interesting. Vidala's Rig added 7% mana stolen per hit. Change 15 to 20 to that same thing where it adds more per level. Um, I don't think this is going to help Vidala's. Main improvements have been made that are generally underused by players. These will offer more reasons to equip multiple of these set pieces to give some new set capabilities. I don't think it's going to be a big amount of changes. Not a lot has changed here, but there's a couple things that I think I will do. Uh, level area changes. Players must now smash the compelling orb to enter the Durance of Hate instead of killing the council. This means the Kalem's Will quest needs to be completed to use the waypoint. No more Act 3 skip. We saw that due to a logic leak, players... Logic glitch. Players often chose to skip required content within Act 3 by bypassing Kalim's Will quest and not experiencing much of what Act 3 has to offer. We decided to make Kalim's Will quest a proper requirement to complete Act 3. Suckers! <laughs> I mean, it should how it be. It adds five minutes to your whole rush, okay? You're fine, you guys. That being said, Act 3 bumpers now going to be a thing, maybe? Um, 
Monsters levels in the following areas have been increased for hell difficulty. What in the world? Underground Passage Level 2. Stony Tomb Level 1. Stony Tomb Level 2. Arachnid Lair. Swampy Pit. Level 1, 2, and 3. Disused Fane. Ruined Temple. Forgotten Reliquary. Wow, a lot of Act 3 places. Sewers Level 1. Abaddon. Pit of Acheron. Infernal Pit. All of those red portals. Drifter Cavern. And Icy Cellar. Are all now area level 85. More places to run. Wow. We felt that certain option areas in Diablo 2 often get ignored on hell difficulty, so we decided to increase their monster levels to add more incentives with risk versus reward gameplay. We hope this provides more reason to find loot in these areas. And it's good because these aren't a lot of required areas. So it's nice that it gives you, you know, like Stony Tomb Run sounds kind of fun now. It's nice this gives you some more options of places to go run around. General gameplay changes. Character hit block will no longer apply while your character is playing a skill precast animation. Character hit block will no longer apply while your character is playing a skill. Okay, block will still trigger for the skill's postcast animation. Character hit recovery will now have diminishing returns when being hit by another player. What? We want to fix some of the awkward lockouts that reject player input from casting skills. For PvP, we added a way to reduce hit recovery spam to prevent edge cases of characters being locked out for too long. Wow. This is totally PvP. This is for the psychic hammer, probably, and the, the druids just stun locking people. So now it has diminishing returns. Mind blast. Yeah, mind blast. Sorry. Wow, big change. I meant Mind Blast, sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, Psychic Hammer also does the same thing, right? It's also similar. No need for Weapon Swap glitch anymore. All right, item tooltip changes. They're just giving some things. Sure. Piercing attack now displays its pierce chance value in the tooltip. That's helpful because a lot of people have no clue. And the quantity value of throwing weapons aim on tome items and always show the total amount to be clear for players. And then how to participate. You go download, install the Battle.net app, restart it, navigate to the menu, and then go to the play button and do all that stuff. Thank you to the community. Our team is so grateful for your support. Last year we launched D2 Resurrected. Now it's 2022 and we're stoked to implement these new changes into our game. Thank you for playing and thank you for your continued collaboration. As we get closer to the launch of Patch 2.4, we plan to reveal more details surrounding ladder rank play. So for now, please stay tuned. If you want to learn more about D2 Resurrected, check out our website here. For real time updates, follow our official Twitter at Diablo. Additionally, make sure to follow Mr. Llama SC on Twitch and subscribe to his YouTube. And also, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can link that and then use a Prime sub once a month on Mr. Llama SC's stream. Oh, that's very sweet of them to note that. Um, feel free to like and subscribe and leave comments on all of his videos. Uh, Mr. Lama SC is the creator and the reason we created Diablo 2 Resurrected. And we're so proud to have him in our lives. And we're so thankful. And uh, you can tweet at him and us with him as well. And um, also, uh, we'll see you in hell, Diablo. Wow! What? What an update. That is a lot of stuff um, that I have definitely never seen before. Uh, area level changes are great. I think there's even a couple more areas they could definitely add if they wanted in like act one, a couple more like holes and things of that nature. Um, but I love to see all the places that are getting adjusted here. Sets, I don't think are going to be that big of a change. Those bonuses don't seem that big. Maybe a couple of them I'll, I'll, do, uh, I'll do now. 
And then I think maybe I'll upgrade a couple items to their exceptional and elite bases. This could be nice, maybe helpful for some stuff. Um, yeah, that'd be a good one. Rune Words Obsession looks really cool. I'm actually really excited about Obsession and I kind of want to use it in some places and try some builds with it and just see what it looks like. All the mercenary changes are amazing and I'm really looking forward to see what it actually does to bring in new mercenary builds because you are losing, you know, infinity anytime you do that, right? But there's a lot of potential for other ways to play that could be fun. Um, Hydra getting cool stuff, Blaze getting cool changes, Nova Thunderstorm now a build, um, Fist of Heavens maybe getting too strong PvP and people being annoyed, Thorns getting changed around, Holy Fire getting a big buff, PvP Necro maybe being strong, Golem, Fire Golem with a level 40 Holy Fire with the way that it's changed could be insane. Uh, summon Druid I'm very excited to try. Fire Claw maybe now a little bit better there. Um, Fire Skills, Fire Druid maybe just better. Insight now being viable for bows and crossbows, super interesting. Throw Barb trying to get a little more love for sure. Leap Attack trying to make a comeback. Um, Warcry getting a little more damage as well for better shout. Blade Assassin just gaining 15 times damage. Sure. Uh, Fire Assassin trying to make a comeback as well. Synergy adjustments will strengthen some traps. Um, good buffs to a lot of the things like Venom and stuff that just had duration buffs that were issues. Martial Arts Assassin looks fun. Boazon maybe a little bit better. Doesn't seem like it's going to be too much better, but a little bit, which is nice. Fix on dodge and avoid. Plague Jav maybe now. Charge Strike even stronger, but maybe some options for how to use it. Impale and Fend now a thing, potentially for some fun. A lot of stuff, a lot of buffs. I don't think it buffs so much in the way that everything is now going crazy. Because you have to remember a lot of the stuff that's getting buffed is stuff that was never used before or very, very rarely used. Like whoever used Impale and things like that. Never, you know. Um, so now it's stuff that could maybe actually be viable. But I think the overall strength is still going to stay the same because you still have your best builds. You still have your hammered in. You still have your Javazon with her Lightning Fury. You still have your Poison Necro. You still have your Blizzard Sorceress. All of those top builds are not improving in strength, really. And are are those are still going to be the top builds, right? I don't see any of these other builds becoming better than those builds. So for me, it's not like they're improving the overall strength of the like openness of that's not a good word to say in that way the 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 strength of <laughs> gosh how op overall everything is but rather <laughs> oh god cut it cut it we're done but rather the other pieces um, of it all. So. Yeah. I'm very excited. I think this looks really great. Mercenaries I think are going to be the biggest thing I'm most excited for. And that Blade Assassin. Uh, wow. Go play you guys. I would love to get your guys thoughts. Post them down below. I mean, there's so many things to have thoughts on. This should be 10 videos, honestly, where we go through each one of them in a separate video. But I don't know if I'm going to post it like that or not. Because this is just crazy. I don't even know.
And so many, yeah, all the three level 85 areas off the crust, bazaars. I mean, there's so much stuff. Um, all right. I am going to go to the bathroom because I haven't <laughs> yet. <laughs> and then we'll come back and we'll do some D2R and some fun stuff there. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, YouTube. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.